Hey everyone, Carrie back here with Homeschool Coffee Break, where we help you stop the overwhelm so you can take a coffee break. Today, I am talking about when the holidays are tough. How can we be thankful when holidays are tough? Now, some of you are having glorious holidays, no problems, but a lot of people, holidays are tough. They are really hard. And how do we, how do we really find joy and peace in our life when things are going crazy? Maybe you're just completely stressed out as a homeschool mom. I get that. Or maybe you're just worried. How am I going to pay for all of this? There's more month than there is money. And I really want to get some special gifts for my kids. Maybe you and your spouse are arguing all the time or your spouse has left. Your in-laws are coming and you're the one that's got to put on the show. Not really, but that's what you feel like. Or you look at your friends and you're like, they've got the perfect Thanksgiving. They have the perfect Christmas Again, that's probably not really true. Or you sit down to the table and someone's missing, either by death or by just leaving or through some sort of rejection or betrayal. Maybe you have a loved one or you that has a chronic illness and it's hard. It is tough. What do you do? Well, I think one of the things, what's the will of God for us in this? The will of God, I believe, is in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God. Okay, pretty plain and simple. How do we do that? We can't be thankful, even in the hard times, even when it's tough. It is not an easy habit. It is a habit you have to work on. And one of the things that I did, and y'all have heard me talk about this, is I have a gratitude journal. This is my second book, actually. I started this in 2010. So for two or three years, every day I was very intentional, very religious about this, maybe legalistic about it. Every day I wrote down three things that I could be thankful for. It may be like I'm looking outside, the sunshine or the dew. The other day I was walking by my neighbor's yard and there was just this beautiful glistening dew. I may have written that hot cup of coffee or a latte, or I got to have coffee with my friends. Over time, it began to be as much about things as it is um, God. And it'd be like, God forgives me. God is faithful. He never stops working. Let's see what I've written here. Uh, the ones that on God. God, the Holy Spirit prays for our family, our situations, and our problems. God is always with me and never leaves. God speaks through me. God is faithful. Uh, so those are a few of the things. And then I've got, like, we got some spicy hot tamales that were yummy. So I put that down. Cooler weather. All right. I am on. Not, this is not brag. This is to encourage you. 9,769. I'm coming on 10,000. I will tell you, if you do this for one year, you will make 1,000. I am not as consistent now because those first two or three years did something. They changed the way I think. I went from complaining all the time to noticing things. I'd be driving down our main street, Texas Avenue, and I'd get all green lights. And I'd be, wow, yay, thank you. Or I would be... Um, able to take my grandkids out for back to school lunch like my mom did for me and be thankful that I have a good relationship with my children and I have a good relationship with my grandkids. They want to go eat lunch with me. Those are little things, but they are really big things. And if you every day think about something, you can change that. Let me just say one other thing. You could start a family journal. This is like the one I gave Ashley uh, for their family. And the goal was every night at the dinner table, you go around the table and everyone says something that they can be thankful for. And then when they start complaining, you can pull that thing out. Look at the things you're thankful for. But I think when we do this on a daily basis, it makes sense. But you may be going, Carrie, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know how tough the holidays are. I will tell you right now, the week this is published or whatever, um, is the week of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is very hard for me. I don't anticipate it being hard this year, but my husband left eight years ago and I did not realize how difficult the holidays could be when he is not there. And even though I would be with family, it was still hard because he was missing and he had left us, you know? And so I still know God told me the day after he said he's leaving, he's coming back to me, Carrie, just don't worry. A year later, God said, He's coming back to your marriage. You pay attention and have faith in me. And so really for eight and a half years, I've been praying every single day for his soul to come back. It's hard. 
It is the hardest. And I've had emotional explosions at Thanksgiving, at the Thanksgiving table, at my parents' farm with the whole family there. So how could I get through that? I was in depression. I did not even know it. Here are three steps that I would encourage you to do. One, we need to spend time with God even when we don't, even when we don't feel like it. Every day that week, uh, that emotional explosion week, I got up and spent time with God because in the presence of the Lord is joy. And then he says, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. That means we spend time in there, we get joy, and then that joy is going to be our strength to endure. And then finally, in James 1, 2, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect, not perfect, but mature, lacking in nothing. And the presence of the Lord is joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And we consider trials as joy. We make that choice. You know, there's a man named Mark Martin Rinkert, and I've shared his story at Thanksgiving in the past, but I want to share it again. He was a Lutheran pastor back in the 30 years war. If you're not sure, your history isn't coming back to you. 1637. Martin Rinkert performed 50 funerals a day, as many as 4,000 that year, including his own wife. Not much on the outside to be thankful for. I don't care what you're going through, but that sounds pretty terrible to me. But it was at this time that Martin Rinker wrote a hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. I'm going to read it. It's in Old English, but it's got some good things in here. Now Thank We All Our God, with hand, heart and hands and voices, who wondrous things has done, in whom this world rejoices. He's done 50 funerals a day, and he's... Uh, looking at how the world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us. I don't see much bounty outside, but he had a different perspective. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next all praise and thanks to god the father now be given the son and him who reigneth with them in highest heaven the one eternal god whom earth and heaven adore for thus it was and is now and shall be forevermore you see how can a man pin those words in the midst of overcrowding surrounded by deadly pestilence with famine everywhere he had the right perspective on life and it was not horizontal it was vertical his focus was on god almighty he wasn't looking at the trials around him don't look at the trials around you during the holidays look at your savior who gives us the holy spirit and we can walk in the power and the presence of the holy spirit you may not feel like being thankful but you can choose to obey God's will. God's will for you is in everything. Give thanks. Take time to give thanks. Because he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. And then what happens? The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thanksgiving is going to lead to peace in the holidays. So start it today. In Colossians 3, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. And then he goes on to say, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And then finally, in 1 Chronicles 16, 34, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love, oh, yeah, his steadfast love endures forever. Read the wrong line right there. His steadfast love endures forever. And so we can be thankful. The holidays are often a trying season. They are tough. They are hard. You may be stressing over your job and making ends meet each month. You may be agonizing over finding a little extra money for a special gift for your kids. Or you may be grieving over your marriage. You may be burdened over your kids 
walk with the Lord or they're not walk with the Lord because they're not walking with God. You may be worrying over keeping up with the other homeschoolers in your area. Let's stop that and let's move away from stress, move away from overwhelm, move away from complaining and move to gratitude. I promise it will change you. Hey, I'm Carrie Beck with Homeschool Coffee Break. We'll talk to you next time.